A lot of battle DJs would like to turn their turntables sideways like this just to prevent from hitting the needle because if you try to backspin this way you will have the tone arm kind of in a way to like you know sway back and forth with the motion so a lot of DJs will turn both turntables sideways so all the needles can be vertical you know left and right needle so basically that's a battle setup and the original name, the original terminology, is called Philly, who was the first person to invent this style was DJ Cash Money in like 1987. It was the 87 New Music Seminar DJ Battle for World Supremacy. And everybody was cutting, you know, they was cutting turntables the regular way, the standard way of backspinning. But he was the only outcast of a whole bunch of DJs, like 20 DJs that was in the battle, and he turned his turntable sideways, and he actually had a lot of speed compared to like a lot of DJs because it's actually a little harder to perform with the turntables standard. So like a lot of, this is the preference, the standard preference for a battle DJ. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work on marking for our, our records. What I normally use for marking records is these circles. I like the circle blue. Blue is my favorite color. Anyway, I use the circles to mark the part of the record right before the part that I want to scratch comes in, which is normally like the blank part of the record or wherever else. So what I do is I take the needle put it on a record, find my spot first. Okay, that's the spot. So what we're gonna do is, I spin the record back once. You gotta have real steady hands to do this. I take it and I put it on the record. Sometimes you have to take it um, and move it back a little bit, depending on how accurate you are. You take the needle, you put it right on there, and it slides right across to your sound. Simple as that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark the records to, um, to the part that we wanna scratch or well, we want a backspin, which we're going to get into later. Um, okay, that's the part we want to backspin, right? So make sure your spot is accurate. Now, some people mark at 12 o'clock, right, which is you're looking at the record, obviously 12 o'clock straight up. So, but I like the mark to the needle, which means I'll take my mark and instead of the mark going straight up, which is right here, I'll put it to where the needle starts. Okay? That's right there. This way, no matter where, I take the record, it's still, the one is right there. The one is always going to be right there, pointing to the needle. In reference to Rock Raider, he gave you the different marks, the cue marks, and like the mark to track the, the record for the backspins. So now what we're going to do is fill up this hose. So if you really want to get advanced in backspinning, you won't really have any problems with the needle skipping because you have a lot of stability. Because basically, basically right here, the hole is kind of loose, as you can see. So like what you can do is take a mark here, one of these marks, place it in back. Like maybe if you, if you like the backspin on the A side, you can place it on the B side so it won't show. And then what you do, right in the middle of the spindle, you just push down on it and it pops in place. Now you have a lot of stability.
Now we're going to demonstrate the techniques of scratching. Scratching was invented by a guy by the name of Grand Wizard Theodore. He was basically the first DJ to manipulate the turntable more than just mixing and blending music together. He came up with the idea of actually moving the vinyl back and forth and creating a sound. So instead of just letting the record play from beginning to end and then switching to the next turntable the way people like DJ Cool Herc and you know people like Africa Bambada did before him, Grand Wizard Theodore decided to actually do more with the turntable. So again, he came up with the idea of scratching. And scratching is basically moving the record back and forth to create a sound. Now, if I move the fader over to the left, where the, to, so I can hear the music coming out of the left turntable, this is what you hear. Now, by moving the record back and forth, you're going to get a sound, and that sound is called a scratch. And that was invented by Grand Wizard Theodore. Now, there's a lot of different forms of scratching. Um, the slower you scratch, the lower the pitch of the sound. The faster you scratch, the higher the pitch. So, and in between there, you have a wide variety of different sounds. Now, after Grand Wizard Theodore invented the scratch, all these DJs started to learn from Theodore and started applying their take and their twist on how to perform a scratch. Um, so where Theodore was doing this, Grandmaster Flash was doing this. Actually incorporating the use of the fader, which is the knob in the middle of the mixer, or the up and down, which is the level knobs. Um, it allows you to start to create a wide variety of sounds. I could do a scratch like when I was a Theodore. But once I incorporate the fader, it sounds like this. Now you just change the scratch. So this is the original scratch sound. Now I'm incorporating the use of the fader. You're simultaneously moving the fader and the vinyl to create a cutting sound. And it all stems from this. We call it the chop or the stab and it's basically similar to what Mixmaster Ice did I really liked and it went a little something like this. Now with the chop, you could actually be a little more funky with it. For example. That's like chopping, or we could also call it cutting because you're cutting the sound in and out by using a fader. Basically with fades, what you could do is by manipulating the level knob on the mixer, it, it spans from zero to 10, 10 being the loudest that you could have the music, zero being no music, it's quiet. Um, if, I'm, if I'm scratching, and simultaneously moving the fader up and down from 10 gradually to zero, it'll sound like I'm fading the music off.
So it's like an echo effect. Now what I'm going to do is create a, a delay effect or echo effect by scratching the record. And at the same time, gradually moving the fader from 10 to 7 to 5 to 3 to 0. This is what it sounds like. So now you're fading. So the best DJs understand the importance of incorporating all of the different scratch styles into one big musical expression. And that's basically all you're doing with, with scratching is uh, the more aggressive temperament you may have, the more aggressive you may be actually scratching. Um, if you're more of a cool, mellow, laid back kind of guy like myself, that personality is going to come across in a turntable. One cool scratch that I like doing is the drag scratch. And basically what you're doing is dragging the, the turntable slowly. So here's a backward drag. This is a forward drag. Backwards because you're starting from the end of the sound and pulling it back. Forward because you're starting from the beginning of the sound and pushing it forward. That's a, those are drags. Another scratch is called the Transformer Scratch, and that was a scratch invented by a guy named Spin Bad, coming out of Philadelphia. And um, back in the 80s, there was this popular cartoon called the Transformers. And it's basically, for those that don't know, it's these robots uh, that form into like these huge, huge monsters or whatever. And as they're forming and changing, there's this sound that they, they, they would make. And Spinbad figured out a way how to recreate the sound. Um, and this is what the first transform basically sounded like. That's slow. Um, then came a DJ from Philadelphia as well named Cash Money, and he saw Spin Bad and perfected that style um, by practicing over and over again and then incorporating more of his personality into what he learned from Spin Bad. And Cash came and it's the, the Transformer went from sounding like this. to like this. Cash Money added like a funkiness to the Transformer. And that's really one of the main things that anyone that wants to learn how to DJ should take away from watching this, uh, this video. And that is, it's okay to watch someone do something that you like, but always try to figure out a way to, to if you're going to copy, figure out a way to make it better. Figure out a way to incorporate your personality in that particular style that you saw a DJ perform. And that way you're always trying to keep the art progressing and, and you're, you're helping the art grow because you don't want to just be a copycat. You don't want to just be someone who's replicating what they've seen already. You want to understand what a person is doing, learn it, then make it better. Um, and that's what, you know, people like Grandmaster Flash, Mix Master Ice, Cash Money all did from, from, and it all stemmed from that one scratch that Grand Wizard Theodore did. <laughs> Just moving the record back and forth gradually, it, it, it blossomed into all these different types of scratches. The Chirp Scratch was a scratch that was made real popular by Jazzy Jeff. And with the Chirp Scratch, what you're basically doing is scratching the record back and forth really fast. But you're incorporating the use of the fader and you're moving it 
in sync with the vinyl. And this is what the chirp scratch sounds like. The Flare Scratch was invented by a guy by the name of DJ Flare, who lives out in the Bay Area. And, you know, he learned how to transform and chirp and, you know, all the different scratches that up until like the early 90s, us DJs were doing. And he figured out a way to take the transformer and, and break down this, the sounds that, that you make when you're doing the transformer and almost cutting them into halves. Um, and what I mean by that is where the transformer sounds like this. The flare sounds like this. So He's actually taken all of the, the, each sound in the transformer and breaking it into halves. And there's different uh, flare scratches. There are two click flare scratches. There are four click flare scratches. There are orbits. That's what I was just doing in orbit. And again, all these different types of flare scratches exist because different DJs started to learn what flare invented, but then put their twist on it. And, and you know, you could flare with the up and down. Uh, DJ by the name of Cubert has made that real popular. Flaring with the up with the phono, or we call it the up and down, and actually making the flare fade away or echo out and then bringing it back in. Basically with the crab scratch is you're taking your pinky, ring finger, middle finger, index finger, and you're stroking it all four fingers across the fader with your thumb on the opposite side of your four fingers um, creating pressure. So this is what it looks like. Almost like a crab walking, you know? and. Uh, Cubert really made the scratch very popular. Um, and this is what it sounds like. What you're basically doing is dragging the, the vinyl back and forth. And incorporating the use of the fader. Once again, you're stroking the fader first with your pinky, then your ring finger, then your middle finger, then your index. And you could start incorporating different ways of ex executing the, the crab scratch. I, I like to really play a lot with pitch. Um, so, in order to get your attention, I'll do something slow, then I'll do it fast. And, and creating those different textures is what allows me to come across the same way a musician does. Um, when you see someone like Bob James playing the piano, he has a sheet of music in front of him with different notes. Some notes are more low in octave, other notes are high in octave. And I like to try to do that with the turntable. So uh, here'll be a, uh, this is an example of a low octave crab. And here's a high octave crab. Now if I combine them together, So that's that's uh, uh, an example of just com combining all of the different ways you can move a turntable slow fast and then doing little chirps in between 
dragging the turntable. And again, you're just trying to create a wide variety of sounds and, and you want your scale of sounds to, to be as unlimited as possible in order to hang with like all the best DJs that are out there. So that's a, a, a basic wrap up of just scratching turntable manipulation, getting a sound and just coaxing different rhythms out of it. Now when you're scratching to a beat, the main thing is to be in sync with what the tempo is playing out of your speakers. Um, so if you're scratching to a slow beat, um, most likely you're going to have to scratch slow unless you're an expert and you understand how to scratch double time. Um, and that basically scratching double time is you're, you're multiplying the speed of your scratches um, so it's, it's going twice the speed of the music that's playing out of the turntable. Since we're going through a lot of the basic steps of scratching, I'm just going to scratch to a regular 4-4 four, four count. And that's basically being able to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. I'm going to play a beat, and what we're going to do is a 4 count. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. That's a four count. And your scratches have to match the tempo of this four count beat. Here's an example. As you could tell, the scratches were in sync with the rhythm and tempo of the beat. Um, if you're scratching too fast, it may not sound right. If you're scratching too slow, it's not going to sound right. You have to be quantized. You have to be perfect with your tempo and, and your ability to stay on beat. It's almost like uh, an MC when, when he has a beat and he's rhyming. He's rhyming on top of the beat. He's flowing. Everything he says falls on every kick, every snare, every hi-hat. And uh, the worst MCs are the ones that can't keep up with the music, that don't know how to count bars. And that's basically what you're doing with, when you're scratching to a beat, is you're counting bars. You're, you're scratching in sync with the rhythm and the tempo of, of the music that you're playing from your speakers. Same thing for a guitar player. If I was up here playing guitar, then I'd follow the tempo and rhythm of the music. If I was playing the piano, I'd follow the tempo and the rhythm of the music. It's the same idea with, with the turntable. You want to treat this like an instrument. You want to be able to scratch in a way that another musician will understand what you're trying to express. Once you've learned the basic scratches, like the baby scratch, which is the scratch that Grand Wizard Theodore invented. Once you learn different chop techniques, um, once you learn ways of, of making the, the, the sound echo and fade out, then you combine all these different styles and approaches to scratching and you express your take on all of those different styles over music. Here's an example of combining different styles of scratching over a beat.
when you're turntable drumming, you're use, applying the same techniques that you would when you're scratching a sound. <laughs> Incorporating the use of the fader, moving the record back and forth, but you're doing it with a kick and a snare. And now you're not just limited to uh, whatever the sound is that you're using. Now you could almost become a drummer on one turntable. And what you're doing is basically manipulating a kick. This is a snare. And this is a hi-hat. And you're manipulating these three sounds the same way a drummer would on a drum kit. The only difference is you're using the, the drums that are coming out of the piece of vinyl that you option to use. Um, so here's an example of turntable drumming. That's an example of turntable drumming. And you're basically applying the same techniques that you would scratching a, a record, but you're executing the scratch with a certain rhythm. Um, you wanna think like a drummer. You wanna think like someone on a drum kit creating a dope groove, a dope beat. That's an example of turntable drumming. Um, in the earlier days, people like Charlie Chase from the Cold Crush Brothers and Grandmaster Flash and Grand Wizard Theodore would, would make turntable drumming sound like this. It was that basic, it was a lot slower. Um, then people like Cut Creator came along and started figuring out ways of recreating their, the, their favorite drums to a rap song. Um, there was this rap song called Big Mouth that uh, a group called Houdini uh, came out with. This is like in the late 80s. And there's a song by LL Cool J called uh, My Radio where at the end of the song, he tells Cut Creator, he goes, Cut Creator, rock the beat with your hand. And this is what the drum beat of Big Mouth used to sound like. Just like a drummer. Oh, you know, you could even bang on a table. Same concept. Um, on a song called Here We Go by Run DMC, the late, great Jam Master J at the very beginning of the song while Run and DMC are talking, he's doing a beat and he's rocking his beat like. So you're just taking a kick and a snare and, and just altering the sound and create, recreating your own drum beat or your own drum pattern. But that's for DJs that have a, a good understanding of how to scratch. Without being able to move the record back and forth, you, you're not going to know how to fade the sound, you're not going to know how to transform, you're not going to know how to crab. You got to have a really good, clear understanding of how to do that first scratch, which we all credit Grand, Grand Wizard Theodore for inventing. Um, so that's basically what scratching is. You know, it's self-expression, it's being able to move the record back and forth, forth and back, and creating rhythms and sounds that otherwise are not there if you just let the record play from, from beginning to end.
Now we're going to get into back spinning records and doing body tricks. Counting bars. That's very important for backspinning because it's easy to backspin, but you have to know your bars. You have to be able to count your bars just in case you go off. You have to come in from a two or a three or whatever. So a bar is divided into four. One, two, three, four. That's a bar. So starting on the one, which is the one is the start of a bar, and it's most of the time on a kick. So counting bars would be something like this. One, two, three, one. One, two, three, two. One, two, three, three. One, two, three, four. That was four bars. Like I said earlier, we have the marks on the records. You get, like I say, if you want, you can use 12 o'clock. I like to use my and needle. And backspinning is taking two of the same records. Beats for Jugglers is a good record to do that with. And backspinning, like you would take one part and repeat it. So let's say we're gonna take from Beats for Jugglers, this part here. And we're gonna take this, we're gonna take two copies of this record, using the marks if you want, if you're on that level, or you could use headphones if you're just spinning in the clubs or just spinning for at picnics or whatever you're gonna do. So we're gonna, just gonna take this record and we're gonna make that part repeat four bars, two bars, eight bars, however many bars you want, all right? Let's go. Some records, I don't know, some weird records might not have a one and you might have to start on a snare. So this is how you would do that. You would um, still use your knowledge of counting bars, but instead of coming in on the kick, which is this, you're coming on a snare. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do that right now, OB. Pretty easy. Body tricks is doing the same thing as backspinning. In the middle of you doing backspinning, you're gonna 
take the, instead of just moving the fader and just going back and forth with the fader like this, now we're gonna take and we're gonna move the fader under our legs or behind our back or spin it around and stuff like that. So to do this, obviously you have to master back spinning, of course. And let's not rush. If you're not 100% comfortable with back spinning, let's not try to do body tricks because this is more advanced. And the most important thing here is keeping the record on beat and making it sound like it's a loop. And it's not just somebody cutting a record poorly and you're not on the one. You have to be 100% accurate before you start doing body tricks. And I'm going to show you some stuff right now. Yeah, and those are body tricks. I just did a little bit now, going behind my back with my mouth balls, and yeah. So I guess the easiest way to get some of these body tricks down is to practice them one by one. Don't try to just do a whole bunch of combos. Okay, I'm gonna try to learn and do all these. That's not possible. It's possible, but it'll take you longer. What I suggest is you find the body trick that um, you like or or it's the most challenging for you and you try and you just keep on practicing it non-stop. Like I used to practice for just hours on one body trick, just getting it 100% accurate before I even present it or show it or do it in front of a crowd. So yeah, what I suggest is just to master it, just practice it. Don't expect to get it in one day or in a couple hours. Just really sit down, practice with some records that you're comfortable with. Make sure that the record isn't going too fast. What I mean by that is pitch-wise, sometimes if, you, if the pitch is going too fast and you're trying to do a body trick, let's say on 45 and it's just not working, like if you're... See, that's just too fast, it's not possible. So what you have to do is you have to be realistic, take your time, keep it on the light for now, the light or slower, and just practice it and good luck. Now we're gonna get into the elements of B juggling. What B juggling is, is a form of backspinning, but what it is is that you manipulate different kicks and snares in patterns where it's like your own rhythm you're forming. I mean, it sounds pretty technical, but it's not really. As long as you know what kind of pattern you're gonna flip. But that requires a lot of practice, you know, if you have time on your hands, which you have to if you're really into this, all right? Cool, so we're gonna listen to this. Okay, so what sounds interesting to this track is the beginning on how it hits. It has a strong beginning to it. Okay, from that hit there, you will wanna build up a whole story pretty much like a song, you know what I mean? From like, like a song that you listen to, but you wanna just build it up into like something that's, you know, really theatrical, that's fast too, and like really sonically understandable. So I'm gonna start off with backspinning, basic backspins.
so you can get a head bop and a sense of rhythm as you backspin. So basically backspinning is the first step to like any beat juggles. So the second step is to kind of get into a offset, but then again on beat form a rhythm that's following the tempo and like just, you know, the rhythm that's in the record. But what you're doing is just formulating your own different techniques of still being on beat, which is called fast patterns. Fast patterns consist of just fast backspinning. So what you want to do is just combine at least like four patterns at the same time and then, you know, flip it into like a story. So check it out. So what you do is just study both parts from the hit to the snare. But what you have to do is be conscious of just backspinning. Like everything starts from just the realm of backspinning. So check it out. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take one record. I'm gonna grab it, and then just start breaking it down in the rhythm. And as I do this, I'm forming a vibe, a certain, a certain head nod. And if you're in front of a crowd, you can add like different styles of, you know, that's visually exciting, like. And I'm quite sure the crowd be like, oh, check them out. You could break down on both turntables at the same time so you can have more of a beat juggling effect by using both sides. And so check it out. Basically, all that is is just beat juggling, going back and forth by, while breaking down the rhythm. What I want to do is kind of elaborate a little more on the breakdowns of bee juggling. So basically, what you start off is what I showed you. Then you bring it halftime. So, you know, build like pretty much a story, like uh, a story of what you're trying to do as far as like, you know, composing a whole beat juggle. All right, so I just show you all the steps of beat juggling. You know, you got your breakdowns, you have your, your fast pattern. So what I want to do is combine both of the elements together to make like a whole complete routine.
All right, so right now we got the three executioners, Rock Raider to my left, Total Eclipse to my right, and I'm Rob Swift, and we're gonna demonstrate the art of performing like a band. And I say it's an art form because it takes a lot of creativeness to take three guys, six turntables, and, and fuse all of the different sounds together through scratches the same way a band would. Um, uh, on this particular routine that we're gonna do, it's gonna be basic improv. We're just gonna do whatever comes naturally to us. Um, I'm gonna be the drummer. Total Eclipse is gonna be the bass player and Rock Raid is gonna be the horn. So here's what the drum sounds like. Those are the drums. And that's gonna basically be the meat of the whole routine. Um, Total Eclipse is gonna be on the bass line. And Rock Raid is gonna be on the horn hit. So the basic concept of jamming like a band would in the sense of using six turntables is the drummer wants to create a tempo. Um, he could go fast or slow. Um, I'm gonna go at a, at a mid tempo and after about four bars, Total Eclipse is gonna follow with the bass line. And then after another four bars, Rock Raider is gonna come in with the horn hit. And then you, at that time, you're gonna hear all of us scratching simultaneously. And each one of us is gonna be doing a different technique. I'm gonna be drumming. And Total Eclipse is gonna be actually a, a manipulating the pitch on the turntable um, to achieve different bass notes. And Rock Raid is gonna be scratching the horn hit. And we're all gonna be jamming together. So here goes.